Hello artists, welcome back to the studio. As you can see, while Clover hangs out inside, I've been outside observing the birds. To observe means to carefully inspect something for all of its details. In today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about, or answering these two questions. What does it mean when an artist uses observation to get the images and inspiration for their artwork? And how can you create a drawing using the basic lines and shapes you observe in an image? Before we learn about an artist who does just this, I wanna read you a story. Hello everyone, welcome back to Behind the Pages with Maggie, breaking barriers one story at a time. Today is episode 19, and I bring to you the story, No Two Alike, written by Keith Baker. Now we're going to follow a pair of birds on a snowflake field journey through a gorgeous winter landscape to explore how everything, everywhere, is wonderfully unique. From branches and leaves, to forest and trees, to friends and loved ones, and to just appreciate the differences that make us who we are. This is quite a short story, and I really do hope that you enjoy it as much as I did when I read the book. Thank you so much. And without further ado, here is No Two Alike. No Two Snowflakes Are Alike. Almost Almost, but not quite. No two nests so soft and round. No two tracts upon the ground. No two branches, no two leaves. No two forests full of trees. No two fences, long and low. No two roads, where do they go? No two bridges, <clears throat> wood or stone. No two houses, Anyone home? No two friends, large or small. No two alike. Among you all. Are we the same? Just alike? Almost, almost, but not quite. This is the end. I hope you enjoyed that story. It certainly has a beautiful message um, about how unique all of us are and how none of us are exactly the same. Next, we're gonna take a look at an artist who also went out into nature. Of 18, John James Audubon left his home in France and sailed for America. As an artist, he became fascinated with the birds of North America, telling a friend, There are so many wonderful colors, so many amazing patterns, I would like to paint them all. In the early 1800s, he was determined to illustrate all the birds of North America, but his journey had many setbacks. 
Once, after returning from a long trip, he discovered that rats had eaten his entire collection of over 200 drawings. After weeks of depression, Audubon took to the field again, determined to redo the drawings he'd lost and to add new ones. Can you imagine what that must have been like? He was only a young man and he went out into the wilderness and set out to observe every bird in North America. On the left is a portrait of the artist when he was younger. On the right, you see some of his artworks. Each bird in his series was drawn to the exact size and scale that they were found in nature. For small birds, this wouldn't be a problem, but can you imagine how big some of the sheets of paper are for the larger birds? All of his observations are comprised in a book called Birds of America. This is his drawing of the American Cardinal, North American Cardinal. On the right is a detail, a close-up. This is what we're going to be working on today. Hi friends, this is Mrs. Spare. Um, today we're going to be drawing a uh, winter cardinal. So I want you to grab um, whatever paper you have on hand. Um, you can use notebook paper if you don't have a sheet of white paper or construction paper. Um, it's completely up to you. It's best to start with a pencil. But I'm going to draw with this Sharpie marker so that you're able to see it better. So the first thing that we're going to do is draw the eye. And then I'm going to draw the beak. Cardinals eat mainly nuts and seeds, so they have short, uh, stout beaks. Now I'm going to draw the head and the crest is the little tuft of feathers that are at the top of its head that kind of stick out. Now I'm going to draw it down its back. And you can pause the video as we go along if you need to. I'm left-handed, so I know my hand probably gets in the way sometimes. And I'm going to curve my line back around like that. Okay, now I'm going to come back here under the beak. And I'm going to wrap this around to draw the under part of the belly. Now, as you can see over here, I need the tail. I'm going to swoop out like that. I'm going to make kind of a zigzaggy, jagged sort of a line right there. Because it wouldn't be perfectly straight, right? 
I'm going to draw some of these longer feathers that are on the bird's wings. I'm going to do another wavy, kind of a zigzaggy line. And then I'm going to draw some of the individual feathers. I'm going to do the same thing with the tail. Cardinals have black feathers around their beak and their eye, so I'm going to draw a shape that goes from the forehead to the eye and down. So this part of my cardinal would be um, black and the rest of the bird is red. Nice. I'm sure you did a wonderful job. Okay, now for the background. Um, for the background, I'm going to give you a few options. So, if you'd like, you can just draw some branches. If you prefer to just stick with the nature scene. Remember, branches kind of go off in a, a Y shape, right? They split off like And in the winter time, after the leaves have fallen off of most trees, a holly tree still has its leaves. And a holly leaf kind of looks like this. So I'm going to draw a line for the center. It has sort of a, a scalloped edge. So kind of like a bunch of U shapes next to each other. You can make as many leaves on your branches as you'd like. Now, if you'd like to draw a birdhouse for your cardinal, let's say you feel like getting a little fancy and being a little creative with patterns, you can create a birdhouse for your cardinal. And like the one over here, I put it on a pole, but you could make it look like your birdhouse is on the trunk of a tree if you'd like. Put a roof on it. A hole that the bird would go inside. And then you can design your birdhouse any way you want. Any kind of pattern. It's completely up to you. When you color it, I always like to give you a lot of options because I know we all have different things at our homes. So if you have crayons that you'd like to use, you're welcome to use those. Or maybe you have colored pencils or markers. Or you can mix them up and use as many different things as you have. So this time, I wanted to try watercolor. Um, so if you have a watercolor set at home and you want to start with that, that's what I was using for this one over here. And as always, if you want to cut paper and collage it, um, you can do that as well. Let's say you want to cut the bird out of red paper and glue it onto your background. You can 
do that, or if you wanted to cut your leaves out of a different paper and glue them on there, um, you are welcome to do that. So I hope um, that you enjoyed this presentation, and I can't wait to see what you come up with on your own. Bye! All right, artists, so until next time, Clover and I are just going to be cozied by the fire. We can't wait to see what you create. Bye.